everybody. Welcome to Monday Night Live in Lexington, you guys. Two different things tonight. We're going to do Facebook live stream. We're also doing Instagram here. Since our main show is on Facebook, we'll try to interact as much as we can with you guys on Instagram, but you're going to kind of take a side yeah. seat here. <laughs> so that. tonight we have a special guest. Say the name again correctly. <laughs> it's not a name. It's, it's just a brand name or whatever. It's Shifu Kareaga. There you go. I didn't want to mess it up. So <laughs> anyway, he is the owner of Blue, Gra or Blue Lotus Acupuncture here in Lexington. And he is also the director of the Wu Taudi Academy of Chinese Martial Arts. Yeah, it's just, it's actually all the three treasures. So okay. martial arts, medicine, and philosophy. Which is very, very good. And I highly suggest that anybody need acupuncture to please go and see this practitioner here. Um, he's most excellent at his craft. Now, tonight we want to start back into a... Um, a topic that we hit on, I guess it was a few months ago. Yeah. Uh, we did an episode on the Plasma Electric Universe, and it's on my YouTube channel and on uh, his YouTube channel as well. And we'll put the links in the comments section for you. Now, for those of you on Instagram, if you want to hop over to Facebook and get those links, I will leave those there for you. Um, so, how did you get started in all of this studying up on the plasma electric universe? Uh, well, one sec. Do you mind if I go ahead? A couple go plugs? ahead. Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, I know that I'm uh, here to talk about me, but I do want to talk about a couple things I think people should know about. I mm -hmm. definitely got to recommend uh, Jolie Productions, the series of DVDs yeah, we'll see. that Lee Pennington puts out. Um, he is a Kentuckian and. Uh, he is president of the Ancient Kentucky Historical Association, which we now have a Facebook group that you can join and get some of this stuff. And, uh, you know, documentaries like this one and the one he's doing on Ganung Padong are uh, unbelievable. I also wanted to mention that for this uh, talk, you may want to pick up a couple things. One would be, for example, this book, The Nephilim Chronicles. And then this one in particular is The Travel Guide. Okay, so you can get the other ones if you want. Uh, but on the Cherokee Coalition page, which there's a link on the Electric Universe Gateway, I made that since we had the last show. Mm -hmm. because I and I'll leave that link on there too, but as well. This one's a travel guide and it can help you get to a number of things. Doesn't have much on Kentucky, unfortunately, but it's got a couple things. And the other one is you might consider getting the history of Lexington. And the way you get this, you go to archives.org and you uh, you get the PDF and you order it. I got mine through Harvard Press. You could probably find any other publisher, but in here, this is where you're gonna find some of the cool stuff about the mummies. So we'll get to that uh, yes. a little bit later. And Lexington so, has mummies. Yeah, yeah, and uh, listen, there, you know, this is an unfolding path. Uh, just today, just today was out driving with my father at the Knobs, and if you guys haven't been to Central Kentucky Wildlife Refuge in the Knobs, not in Richmond, but uh, if you haven't been to that, it's really worth going to. And mm -hmm. I just pulled up a documentary to listen to on the Ancient Astronauts Argument channel, and it's the uh, basically the hidden history of this entire region. And they started mentioning all sorts of things that I, I still hadn't even covered. And you know, lo and behold, they start the documentary. The director of the Smithsonian, at the time they made this documentary, didn't know about the Hopewell culture. Mm -hmm. And that's the most absurd thing, because after all, one of the books we're going to be referencing today is this one you can still get on Amazon, The Ancient right. Monuments of the right. Mississippi Valley, uh, Squires and Davies. It's not what I would call the most standard book uh, anymore, but it, the, the drawings and everything are standard. Mm -hmm. The interpretations are completely dated and a little bit racist for Victorian era. So. Uh, you know, it's just amazing mm -hmm. the amount that's been hidden. And how I got into it was doing this Hidden Destinations in Kentucky. Which, which I'm going to leave a link to that, too, because there are a ton, a ton. of hidden destinations. And you've put how many up? I mean, it's about 980 Shoot. and just 20, <laughs> about 24 new ones in the last month or so. And yeah. it, it 
just on Friday, six more destinations went right onto the map, mm -hmm. and uh, the credit goes to my assistant for finding those, mm -hmm. uh, which I had thought I had exhausted all the, con the conservation efforts, and, and, and there were some more. So it just keeps unfolding. I, I started with a whole a book called, uh, f you know, Travel Guide, 50 Hikes, something like that, and mm -hmm. uh, there were pictures of waterfalls you could swim in. I thought that was amazing. I didn't know about that. Yeah. And I started putting them all on Google Maps because I'm, I'm a logical kind of guy. I do everything that way. My background in engineering, I, I build things, right? Yeah. Uh, and so I thought at 200, I thought I was done. At 300, I thought for sure I was saturating and, 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 and overloading the map. By the time I get to 500, I just embraced it. And then you get to 800 and you're going, oh, we've got to be it. And then I get to 900, I'm like, well, I just don't, you know, what, I, what we know about what mm -hmm. is right in front of us is never as much as we imagine. That's so sad, though, that the majority of us oh, yeah. don't even know all these hidden destinations. Oh, yeah. I mean, Little Egypt, Angel mm -hmm. Hollow, yeah. Short Creek, Haunted Cave Road. Uh, That'd Caver's be Plunge. For me. Yeah, there you go. There's two on <laughs> cave roads. So the, and I just visited one and it felt pretty dark. I was on my, my trip to Murder Branch. Oh my gosh. Yeah. <laughs> so, Murder Branch. And that's up there to you know, that uh, Devil's uh, Market House yeah. arch. So uh -huh. that French Burg area, very interesting. And uh, so the the Lee Pennington and his group, they, mm -hmm. they definitely are big on Menifee County. Yeah, yeah. So it, you know, it started me down this road of searching about Kentucky. And I thought, so I wrote the book. And I thought I was done with the Native American stuff. I got snubbed by a, uh, I believe his name out, but a mainstream archaeologist. I think he wanted a byline. But, uh, you know, I, I thought, okay, well, I, I must have exhausted what I can find. And then I, I started digging more, and, and I guess probably also a little bit of spirit got in. Probably when I visited Wycliffe Indian Mounds, probably yeah. a little bit of <laughs> Native spirit. That place is haunted, just like that. That place know. is super haunted. Very haunted, okay. <laughs> I had, to, I had to pull it out of my son. He was going to make him sick. So, yeah. uh, and the next day we went and visited the Trail of Tears, uh, the uh, arch over there. I, I, it'll come to me as a Mantle Rock, Mantle Rock uh -huh. Arch, which there there are cactuses on the top of that. Oh, that is so in cool in Kentucky. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, you know, just I think unfolding and all the the waterfall spirits. Let me tell you, all the waterfall spirits are very different. Each one is mm -hmm. so different. Each waterfall spirit is different. They are. They have totally different personalities, and mm -hmm. some of them are jerks, and some of them actually are really cool and, and opening and inviting. So after visiting all these things and and moving out throughout Kentucky over the last four or five years. Uh, somehow I got in on the Electric Universe stuff, and I, I don't even remember how it happened. It was usually when the best the way the best things go. Oh yeah. Now I didn't buy, and, and I don't recommend anybody just buy into anything. Okay, you know, right now I'm currently learning Atlantean stuff, uh, Sumerian stuff, and Electric Universe stuff, mm -hmm. and you got to keep them separate. And you got to look at things where Separately. they yeah where they belong. Mm -hmm. Where it hit for me was I went to the shelf. Okay, according to this Dave Talbot. Okay. Mm -hmm. His theory is that you're looking at archetypes. So take, for example, if you find crescents here in Kentucky, but no bulls, but then you find bull references in other countries, and mm -hmm. you find onks and other, other shapes that are going up towards the heavens with a circle and a line coming down, uh, that you're, what you're looking at is an archetype. That mm -hmm. archetype describes several different interpretations mm -hmm. that look different but they're actually the same one thing right so the the pillar of heaven the the mountain of heaven the tower of babel all these things going up the ladder to heaven mm -hmm. jacob's ladder these references that turn out to be something that you can actually see in a laboratory so there and, and in the electric universe gateway if you look on the left you will see the link to the uh parat plasma petroglyph paper you can go and look at the paper yourself this is Los Alamos Laboratory. He did this mm -hmm. stuff in 1991. And it was groundbreaking stuff. A lot yeah. of good things happened in the early 90s. Yeah, they did. And so you go and you look. So I pull out this Kentucky rock art, and boom, there they all are. And they're all misinterpreted right away. Mm -hmm. You can see that they're not, and that's what my paper currently hinges on, mm -hmm. in fact. And, and we'll go through these as soon as uh, we're ready. But uh, there are just wildly... Uh, dismissive interpretations and then there's just wrong interpretations and then mm -hmm. very rarely a correct interpretation where it's very obviously a bird it's a bird yeah where it doesn't look like a bird at all and it looks like a monster from carpenters the yeah. thing <laughs> it's not a it's not a bird it's a it's a plasma fletcher let's go back and do some shout outs and see I want to make sure that there are no questions um, because 
anybody who wants to ask a question, just put it down in the comments and I'll try to uh, catch it. So, Destiny, hey, Danny, Rita, Leanne, uh, Linda, Patricia, shout out to Sandra, Clemens, thank you for sharing all these episodes. Hey, Denise and Linda and Alyssa. Hey to Melissa Begley and Cleo. Hey, Ricky. Um, so let me go down through there. Brenda Joe. Hi, Brenda Joe and Mindy. Hey, Cynthia. Thanks for tuning in. Hi to Teresa, Mindy, and Steve Hawkins. Thanks for joining. And hey to Mary Cummings. So if any of you guys want to ask a question, go right ahead. And so. Yeah, are we starting with the rock art? Yeah, I think, well, let's look at the earthworks, because I didn't bring the Kentucky Rock Art book. I've got oh, okay. an entire folder on the Electric Universe Gateway, and it's got the Kentucky Rock Art, the scans. Obviously, they're not credit to me. I did just see them in the Highlands Discovery Museum, because I was photographing it as mm -hmm. in Ashland. There's some wonderful mounds there in Ashland that are only the remnants of a huge complex of it. There are massive complexes that See, have disappeared I didn't even know about from that. Ashland and Portsmouth. Portsmouth mm -hmm. had one of the biggest, and if it was on the Kentucky side mostly, and then partially on the other side. Mm -hmm. So you know these these complexes, which are detailed in this uh, Smithsonian book, uh, have mostly been erased. And that documentary I shared with you is detailing you know how bad we're talking about. If you if you just wiped out the Nubian or Egyptian stuff or you got rid of Stonehenge it would be that catastrophic and that's what exactly mm -hmm. what has happened so you know I was seeing these glyphs even uh, there but th there's no interpretation there's no there's pretty much no interpretation so let's let's look at a couple of these earthworks so uh, here is an earthwork uh, showing here the, the quote great man now look here see how it morphs and the foot and then look at this the, the foot on this side now, unless, you know, he was on some kind of torture device, and th these are huge, okay? <laughs> yeah. the, I want you to understand these are some of the biggest earthworks, or in some cases, they are the biggest earthworks in the whole world. Mm -hmm. In Newark, they are the biggest earth earthworks in the whole world. This stretching is clearly meeting, this is plasma uh, energy, or, or you could say ionized gases mm -hmm. being stretched, and probably across the sky, because when you see these different kind of, uh, structure, different cultures showing the same thing. You've got giants and, and earthworks and, and, and geoglyphs, they can sometimes call them in, in Britain, mm -hmm. and you've got them in Nazca and, and the older culture, the Paracas, uh, then you know that you're looking at something that is seen in the sky or alien, which right. we'll stick with right now, yeah. the, the more uh, easily proven uh, stuff. Now, look, let's look at some more of these. So, look at this one. Mm -hmm. You see the the two heads. Yeah, that's a very strange way to depict a quote an alien. You know, like the. But if you look at the Nazca one, mm -hmm. it's it's the owl feature is one of the most that's haunting right. aspects it of is it. An owl well, that's feature. because what we're really looking at is the the uh, Mars and Venus mating that the Sumerians were describing. Here's mm -hmm. another one of the uh, the great man in different parts. So clearly, mm -hmm. some of the energy is starting to either dissipate or change shape. Uh, you've got here also variations on a theme, mm -hmm. and remember these are all very, very large. And then the one that my paper centers on here is this, quote, turkey foot glyph. Right. And the, right. the, tur the turkey foot, this is where it, what's interesting, is that the, in the Kentucky rock art, you get this asymmetrical glyph. Now, I don't know about you, they've, they've proven 40,000 years ago, there is art that Pablo Picasso said, there's nothing new that we know. This, they were doing it. Mm -hmm. And yet, they started morphing everything. Everything started changing and becoming more grotesque sometimes, or frightening. They started, of course, drawing hybrid chimeras and things like that. Yeah. And very scary uh, pictures. Of course, the famous one with the central figure and all the shadows around that. Mm -hmm. That's a very frightening one to actually observe. Yeah. And so here in Kentucky, the assumption somehow made... They're smart enough to, to make these huge geometrical shapes uh, and, and earthwork projects without apparently wheels or anything. And yet they can't draw a symmetrical turkey foot, and yeah, I find that it doesn't make any yeah sense. highly irregular. <laughs> and then when we actually go and look at some of these, uh, 
Now, Massive you did lifts. a video on that today. I uh, I did, yeah, on Saturday. And if people want to see, you know, a yeah, little bit more Yeah, if you want to know more about that. And thanks for all the hearts on Instagram. Kisses to you guys. Um, if y'all want to know more about that, we'll put the link to um, the video that he just did on that interpretation in the comments section for you to look up. Hey, Marion. Right, so here's a very famous giant earthwork. It's a mound, in this case, and it's called the Alligator Mound. Now, what do we all know about Ohio, Kentucky? No. There's no alligators, no. okay? In the same way there's no giant snake-eating uh -huh. serpents here, Right. Uh, there's no alligators. Mm -hmm. And actually, if you look, this little thing sticking off the side is clearly not originally one of the three. So when we look at the three, the, the little turkey foot thing here, it's also repeated at the uh, Eagle Mound, mm -hmm. which is in Newark. And if you get in, you can see it's not symmetric. Right. You see that the, the toes don't get to the same to the same center. Uh -huh. So the petroglyphs in the rocks, looking also asymmetrical with the alligator glyph or the alligator earthwork and mm -hmm. the eagle earthwork. And I'm seeing this repeated also at other sites in the Ohio, Kentucky area, which mm -hmm. tells us that they are seeing something that they want to record is important. And there's a, either a conjunction or something like that. I maintain it's a conjunction because if you look at the mound, it looks like different objects up in the sky. And it does look to, astrological. It looks, in it looks astrological. It's a very good And you know, the, the zodiac is all, you know, goat. Yeah, Scorpio, well, it, yeah, yeah. Well, some of those, of course, are the the actual uh, zodiac constellations. Mm -hmm. But then, when they would see them interact with each other or mm -hmm. appear to interact, mm -hmm. for example, maybe the, the Thunderbird, the yeah. Thunderbird, this very famous Nazca Thunderbird. Guess where they also they also find that in America. They don't find it just in Peru. And so this this large Thunderbird moving about, and the Sioux would talk about the Thunderbird. Mm -hmm. And when they would see that interacting, say, with Orion the Hunter, then they would create a story uh, around that. Mm -hmm. uh, that would be our theory. It's okay? all kind that of fitting together. <laughs> That's right. And, and, and what boggles the mind is that we're talking about earthworks that were here in Lexington. I don't know how many of your viewers are in Lexington, but in Lexington, mm -hmm. the earthworks at Mount Horeb uh, and Peter's Village is what they're calling it. Peter's Village is very nondescript name that you actually in my book I, I pretty much almost didn't I, I went and I photographed Mount Horb and just about passed it by mm -hmm. that structure is probably older than the ones at Chili Coffee it's probably a an original stamp of wow. those ones because uh, the reports of finding mummies and the reports mm -hmm. of of uh, hidden catacombs and again, you know, I would love to see that. I mean, in this book, you can actually see some of these uh, structures uh, maintained that are you now they're now gone. Uh, that they're not in Fayette County anymore. Here's one right here. Mm -hmm. This is massive. That's the Elkhorn. Oh, going through okay. the earthwork. Uh huh. Okay. And then uh, here we got on the next uh, couple pages. So this would be a really good book for people to buy if they're interested in this. Yeah, I think that I think that if they're going to go out hunting uh, earthworks and glyphs and, and everything that they sh they need and it they on really the shelf. They really want to know about Kentucky's yes, history. Yes, yes. If they really if they really really want to know. Of course, here's one that used to be in Bourbon County. If anybody are you in Paris, that top one that was Bourbon County. Okay, massive, huge earthworks. Mm -hmm. And then uh, another one from Lexington. Now, I want you to look at this one, the, the, this egg. Look at the, this egg. This is a huge earthwork. We're mm -hmm. talking hundreds of feet. What is that little dip right there? Yeah, why is that there? We don't know. We have no idea because, because the, the evidence has been destroyed. Yeah. And now the only way we're going to see this evidence, part of my project is the LIDAR. There's already a guy doing the PD, he's doing his dissertation on the, petro, the, the geoglyphs of Peter's Village. Mm -hmm. So I'm going to wait for his science to come out. Uh, I, I have already done some preliminary work, and you can see a lot of these remains, mm -hmm. but they were pretty much plowing through these guys. I mean, on the Cherokee Coalition That's site, you can go to the terrible. evidence locker, and you can read stories, as, and you can see them in this Nephilim's Chronicles as well, mm -hmm. where universities were reclaiming the, the mounds and their stuff. And then that was destroyed. In fact, and this is a That's reason. That's sad. Uh, it's so sad. Oh and I don't God. use the term Adena professionally because Adena is the farm that the owner had them come in and, you know, catalog it and then destroyed it. God. So I use, I'm using now professionally the term Elegui. 
okay, because mm -hmm. that is more respectful. That's what the Sioux called them. The Sioux thought that they were descendants. The Lakota Sioux thought they were descendants. Of course, the Cherokee thought that they were descendants. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure exactly where in Bourbon County. Well, I'll have to do some more research to find out exactly where. One of the things about archaeology that will drive you crazy, okay, if you go to the Kentucky Heritage <laughs> Council, guys, and you go to their resources page, they have uh -huh. two 600-page volume releases. They have released some information. 24,000 archaeological sites. And I can tell you, because I'm the one who's actually put them on my map, mm -hmm. and I've done another map in the Eastern culture, they've only publicly released a few dozen mm -hmm. of these sites or things that people have found. That's Why do you pitiful. think that the travel guide, he has so few things in his yeah. book because yeah. they, keep it, they keep it hidden. And what they're not telling you is they've got no sites in Kentucky that I'm aware of where mammoths were killed by these, by these people mm -hmm. or mastodons. Mm -hmm. And yet they're telling you that they've all been killed by mastodons and mammoths. It's absolute uh, ludicrousness. So yeah. my paper goes into that and I have my own alternate theory as to the megafauna, uh, mm -hmm. megafauna extinction. So and the evidence in Kentucky still remains. It's a little difficult. Uh, you're, do you suggest that Well I do. Because, yeah. Look at this guy. So this is Rick Osman. He wrote Graves of the Golden Bear Ancient uh, Kentucky Historical Association. Yes, and uh, you get a newsletter uh, every month. I think that it's every month, might be every couple months. It's only ten dollars a household, so you can get your whole household signed up. But the Facebook group is free, and there's back issues of the newsletters up already. Okay. So Rick Rick does work, and he looks at copper mines. There's amazing copper mines, fluorite mines in the area, and uh, in the Kentuckiana region. Yeah. And uh, he is finding just amazing stuff. He's shown me some of his work. I mean, just a smidge. I mean, these guys are uh, are even more uh, aggressive than I am, you know. Mm -hmm. And they are finding stuff that will blow your mind. Yeah, it this Roman coins, letter was so Roman coins in Louisville. Very, very interesting. And yet, you're right. Kentucky is one of the biggest places for fluorite mining. That's right, and it was important because it was for not for looks. Okay, fluorite is really uh, pretty when you backlight it, but it was for iron smelting. Mm -hmm. So take a look at, like speaking of, of cultures coming from around the world, what's this look What's this look like to everyone? Oh, over here. This one? Look at that. Looks, what does that look like? Actually, it, it looks like a menorah. It looks like a yeah. Well, that's, <laughs> that is a hundreds of feet in size. Wow. And that one's, that one's still remaining, or at least at the time that this, that the, the commentators in 1894, they were dismissing, of course, it doesn't look uh -huh. Like in a menorah, they didn't. They doubted it. Well, they're finding in these cultures in the mounds, okay, and then they're burying this in boxes, mm -hmm. Hebrew and, wow. and Aramaic, and they then they miss. And this is in the nineteen uh, early eighteen hundreds, mm -hmm. uh, you know, or early nineteen hundreds. They would flip it upside down and, and then say, "Well, we don't know what it is. It must be you know Cherokee before we knew that they had the language." Then they put that away like that's not a big deal. Turns out it's Phoenician. Oh my goodness! Yeah, and 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 these were Smithsonian scholars on uh, Semitic studies uh -huh. who are finding these from Ohio Hopewell and looking at them. It's all in that documentary that, that's been shared, uh, and I will put it up in the uh, I'll put it up in the Cherokee Coalition uh, really soon tonight, probably. Okay. So you that's know these amazing. these earthworks are recordings. Now the question becomes, how did it get there? Uh, and how did some of these other things get there? Either they were influenced, uh, there's an Atlantean influence, or uh, there's trade networks that they're not talking about, or they don't want you to talk about. I mean, Maybe or they saw it in the sky. Maybe there's already evidence of Atlantean stuff that they've destroyed. Oh, there's absolutely. There's, I, I think that there's no doubt, guys, that our mummies mm -hmm. from Lexington are gone. I don't think that we'll ever find them again. If, if, the, if the director of the Smithsonian doesn't, had never heard of the Hopewell culture, mm -hmm. there's almost no chance that we'll ever, it's like that scene in Raiders of the Lost Ark, it's in a box somewhere it's or it's warehouse. been incinerated. <laughs> there, there are assertions uh, and conspiracy theories that the giant bones, which are probably Nordic or Welsh uh, in, in nature, but could be Roman, you never know, it mm -hmm. could be, but uh, that they are probably destroyed, probably the mummies are also destroyed. And we're talking about the culture that was around at the cataclysm that according to Sumerians, is probably 2024 BC. Uh, we're talking Sodom and Gomorrah stuff. You yes. know, so, anyways, that's a different yes. topic. We'll jump that's into a, that. That's a huge this topic. Is, uh, <laughs> yeah, this can go on uh, for a very long time. And we're five minutes away from our clothes, so I know uh, we, we've we got... We didn't get to the Spratt Stoneworks, I'm sorry. Yeah, we've so got so the Spratt much. Stoneworks, uh, it, again, Menifee County coming up again. And uh, these guys, the Ancient uh, Kentucky Historic Association, mm -hmm. 
they're really big on Menifee County. There is something special there. The uh, precipitation goes up there by about four to six centimeters. Yes, right over Means, Kentucky. It's really strange. That I had noticed a change going. Oh, there's into a definite that. change. There's no, there's no doubt about it. And they are up on the ridges uh, above where the shelter we trace uh, cuts through is a mysterious set of stoneworks. And, uh, you know, I'm going to take a look at what I can get and glean. There is some definite... Take uh, pictures. Just, I will, I will. You're going to come with me. We're going to wait until it's probably a little less uh, jungly. I just went by the Boyd Serpent Mound. Boyd mm -hmm. County. We have our own Serpent Mound people in Boyd County. I didn't know that. Yeah, right on the... the uh, I think it's the Big Sandy River. I'd have mm -hmm. to look. But overlooking... Ashland Oil owns this. And guess who You know, plowed right through the head of it? Oh. Ashland Oil Company. So oh my uh, they, gosh. they fenced it off. I took a look. It, it looks really jungly. So probably going to get photos of that in the uh, fall. Mm -hmm. But we have our own serpent mound. And these serpent mounds are incredibly important uh, mm -hmm. pieces of evidence. Because considering the diversity of species and the kind of megafauna and then other power species. that, And you just think of the legends coming down about mammoths and saber yeah. tigers and ground sloths. Yeah. The obsession with serpents is remarkable, so yes. probably pointing directly to something seen in the sky. And according to Dave Talbot, again, if you go and you look at symbols of an ancient of an alien sky, uh, discovering, the, remembering the end of the world, the Thunderbolt, uh, th the entire Thunderbolts project, you're starting to talk about archetypes that have to do with uh, most of them, of course, with the second cataclysm, mm -hmm. not the deluge kind of era stuff, because that's so old that it, it, it's a little lost in this. There is a lot of stuff remembered in Egypt, but yeah. mostly the stuff that is from that era, that Bronze era, a, Age era, and what the natives were seeing and writing down. And what, of course, in South America, a lot of these earthworks, the, the circle and square next to each other. And the similarities. You see them in the Amazon, right? they're popping up, right. they're cutting down trees, they're finding these these same earthworks. There's, so there has to be something They've got to be, universal yes, something, behind it. Something universal to mm -hmm. it, you know, of course there's a lot of people who are going to say, well, it's landing pads. In Chinese um, philosophy we say, you know, that heaven is round and earth is square. Where does that saying come from? I know this, last year they announced that they found that Mauritian subcontinent mm -hmm. under, under Mauritian, right? in the Indian Ocean. Yeah. So Lemuria is totally possible at yes. this point. Lem the, the door is open on Lemuria, if you're big on uh, landing in theory. Well, I am. <laughs> maybe all the, all the space stuff was there. Uh -huh. We have no idea. I mean, honestly, we, don't, we just know maybe, the Sumerians are saying we'll it was there. Find out. It, the Sumerians are saying it and the Mahabharata is saying it. Mm -hmm. And then they start digging in Dwarka under the sea and then they stop it and they say, well, we don't need to know anything else. <laughs> and there's, there's, hidden, there's uh, the cities underneath of uh, the water yeah. in, outside Japan, not to just mention Bimini Row, west of Cuba. I mean, there's these pyramid structures appearing everywhere. And once more, a plug for this DVD, Lee Pennington, Bosnian Pyramids. You, if you want to go underneath and see what's in the ground, Okay, now yeah. Graham Hancock doesn't believe that it's real concrete. I think the jury's out. It was a mud rock as a concrete. It's older than Rome. That's, that's what's for, that's sure, for sure there. And the tunnels are man-made and they're plugged up on purpose. Yeah. Gobleki Tepe also buried on purpose. Not mm -hmm. by a flood, on purpose. It's a time capsule. So yeah. the question is, what are we looking at? And, and why? And why? And the mm -hmm. science is also changing. And, and in future uh, episodes that we'll do, we'll talk about how uh, plasma science is evolving at an, an advancing rapid rate and we're not just putting the, the band-aid on a dead theory. I'm here to tell you guys that last year Big Bang, well b particularly dark matter, took huge probably insurmountable hits to oh, it yeah. and it's and it's more or less dead and they're going to keep they're going to keep it limping is. on but yeah but it, well for a while things are changing. Anyway. <laughs> yeah things are changing really fast and I'm excited it is exciting stuff because, you know, the potentials of, like, what is Michael Tellinger finding with these stones? Are yeah. they absorbers of energy? Are we somehow able to get plasma energy? Would, were I these sites so. to I draw plasma they energy? We don't conduct. know. They somehow conduct. Well, well he energy. took them through a, a, an x-ray at the airport and mm -hmm. it set off the, uh, the, shut down their systems and the yeah. guards came out and put, a, put guns to, you know, the situation and said, hey, what's in this bag? What's in this stone? Yeah. Weird thing, and that's a site that almost no archaeological work has been done in mm -hmm. South Africa. And it's, mm -hmm. it's absurd, but it's just the truth. There's just a whole lot that mainstream would rather sweep under the rug because it doesn't fit the main narrative, which has been set by Egyptologists forever. Right. And, and the whole Greek 
the reason that we are a, such a Greek and Roman based society is because they didn't even think anything else was older. Mm -hmm. Lo and behold, there's Sumeria, and now there's Gobleki Tepe and yep. its neighbor, which is another Tepe. And so there are older civilizations. Ganung Padang, they found wood inside that pyramid. So things are moving quickly. Um, the electric universe may not have everything right, okay? But, uh, but at least we're uncovering a bunch of really fascinating stuff. That's stats. right. And I want to clarify, I'm not yet, I'm not part of the Electric Universe group. I'm doing my own research. I'm on my own. I don't know Dave Talbot or Wal Thornhill. I just find that their arguments are very compelling. Yeah. And they make predictions that come true vis-a-vis mm -hmm. -vis comets. Uh, the flashes before the, the probe hits the comet. Yep. You know, and no dust. And they're not finding any snow on these so-called dirty snowballs. So <laughs> what's really happening? Evidence in Kentucky, amazing stuff going right back to uh, the ancient days. Maybe these, maybe some of these lost cities, Sprat Stoneworks, maybe mm -hmm. they will have more answers. We won't know unless we get up there. That's and, right. And unless we investigate. And we've got to protect we, it. We have an open mind. We protect the sites. And we investigate into this stuff. Yeah, because they're not going to do it. I can promise you that. They, there's, there's too much. Uh, you, you, they risk their own fame if they, if they go outside of a certain little box, and 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 they're not, they're not allowed to listen to. So on one hand, you know, this is part of my paper as well. You know, the natives are so smart, but oh, but they can't figure out what a wheel is. Or maybe they thought the wheel was sacred, and so they weren't going to, you know, use mm -hmm. it for a wheelbarrow or something like that. Yeah. If they're doing. You know how the pyramid has a 51.8 degree side? Mm -hmm. The, the 51.8 degrees shows up in the Newark earthworks. <laughs> the same degrees. I, that, that cannot be coincidence. That's not coincidence. No. The mathematical improbabilities is too high. See, I feel like we're on an episode of X-Files where we're just like, <laughs> we want to know the truth. So with that, we're going to wrap up. You guys stay tuned. There's going to be more of these episodes. Um, what you need to do is go to my Facebook page and put C first. And we'll put his Facebook page on there as well and go and mark his C first. And you won't miss any of these episodes because we are going to go through quite a bit this fall. I've got a schedule to give you here. Here it is. Stoner's Creek, mouth of Flat Run in Bourbon County. Stoner's Creek at mm -hmm. the mouth of Flat Run in Bourbon County. I'm sure it's gone by now, but but uh, there you go. That's, that's sad. That's where the, uh, yeah. And that's a uh, raft and ask surveyed that in 1820. So let's look at this schedule. Um, we didn't even hit <laughs> half of this. So I would oh, say, yeah, <laughs> do you want to do the other half on August the 7th and then go to Velosky's Conundrum on Well, September? yeah, because you're, we're talking about, we're getting back into the electric universe, uh, their entire way mm -hmm. that they look at things, and you can't talk about it with, without right. Velikovsky and, and right. Houghton Arp. So we'll just move everything down one and finish this up. No, I think we could fit it in the same, oh, okay. the same episode, yeah. Okay, so if you guys want to take this down on August the 7th, we're going to finish this material, and we'll go over the Velosky conundrum. Velikovsky conundrum. September the 11th, we're going to do Plasma Science and the Project Sapphire, but that's Sapphire, S-A-F-I-R-E. November the 6th, we're going to do Space and Plasma Cosmology. And we'll see where we go from there. <laughs> I know. I, talking about some big stuff already. That's okay. That's, yeah. What else are we going to do with oh. our time? Oh, yeah. <laughs> well, thanks for tuning in tonight to Instagram and Facebook. Thank you, guys. And I will see you next Monday night. Kisses from Kentucky. Bye, Bye. you guys.